Hi everybody, welcome back to the Brains Bible Institute. I'm Pastor Tim, um, here to uh, continue our lesson. We're in module number seven on the apostolic mission, and today is lesson number 15. This will be part two in our little series here on the Apostle Paul. Last week we talked about uh, the Apostles' conversion and um, the three accounts of that in the book of Acts, and also that at the end of Paul's... Um, excuse me, right after his conversion, the Bible says in Acts chapter 9, verse 20, immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So um, Paul was um, uh, referencing Psalm chapter 2. We talked about that a little bit last week, about the, the, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Anointed One in, um, in Psalm chapter 2. And what he's, what he's preaching here in the synagogues is that Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified, is in fact that Messiah. And so it says in verse 21, Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is, is this not he who destroyed those who called on this name, that is the name of Jesus, in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? Verse 22, But, remember, still, uh, in verse 21, he's still in Damascus. But in verse 22, it says, But Saul increased all the more <coughs> excuse me, in strength. That one statement, as I mentioned last week, is expanded on greatly in the book of Galatians. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 1. And this is a very, very, very critical point with regard to the Apostle Paul and where he got his information from. See, he was, he was at a bit of a disadvantage compared to the other apostles who had been trained personally by Jesus Christ, who sat at his feet and listened to him talk and interact with the crowds and so forth. For three, three and a half years, they were privy to Christ's personal teaching, but yet the apostle Paul was not. However, he was privy to Christ's teaching, but on a different occasion. And it was over an extended period of time, as we're going to see in Galatians chapter 1, where, where Paul is uh, defending himself here as an apostle, as a genuine apostle, as one of the twelve. And that's critical that you understand that Paul in Galatians is presenting himself as one of the Twelve apostles, having all of the qualifications that the other eleven had as well. We talked a little bit about that last week. Well, let's look at verses um, eleven, uh, beginning in verse eleven of Galatians one. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Neither, for neither I received it. Excuse me, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is, Paul got it directly from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure, and tried to destroy it, and I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous for the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, that's what happened on the road to Damascus, right? To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. Now, that's, this, is, this is the critical statement. I did not confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. I want you to notice he refers to the himself as being one of the apostles right here in this statement. He says, I did not go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. He's saying, I am an apostle along with those in Jerusalem, but they were apostles before I was an apostle. So he's using the word apostle there for both them and himself in the same sense. All right. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. 
Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. What he's saying here is I didn't get this from Peter. I didn't get it from the others. Because he goes on, he says, I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Right? I didn't see that. I didn't get my message, the message that I preach. I didn't get from Peter. I didn't get it from the other apostles. I got it directly from Jesus Christ. That is, I didn't get it secondhand. That's the point that he's making. I got it directly from Jesus Christ. Now, go back. Keep your finger here, though, because we're going to be uh, spending more time in Galatians. Go back to Acts chapter 9. <clears throat> Verse 22, it says, but Saul increased all the more in strength. Now, that statement, as I said before, is a summary. It's just a very brief summary of the whole time that he spent in Arabia, being taught personally by Jesus Christ. And then what does it say? It says, and, and after he increased all the more in strength, it says, he confounded the Jews who dwelt at Damascus, proving that Jesus is the Christ. Now, after many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. And then it talks about how he went up to Jerusalem. Keep your finger there. Go back to, <coughs> excuse me, go back to Galatians. It says, verse 18, I'm oh, sorry, 17, it says, I did not go up to Jerusalem, but I went to Arabia, and then I returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, that is three years from his conversion, so we know how long it was from the time of Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus until the time that he went to Jerusalem to see Peter it was three years. In during that three-year period, all that's in Acts chapter 9 verses um, 20 through 25 occurred in that three-year period. All right? All of it. That is, Paul immediately preached Christ in the synagogue, and everybody was amazed. All right? So that was right at the beginning, and that probably was, you know, that might have only taken a few weeks. You know, he might have gone to the synagogue three Sabbaths in a row and taught that Jesus was the Christ. But then it says he increased in strength, and that's when he was in Arabia, all right, where Christ appeared to him personally. And then he comes back, and to Damascus, because he says he returned back to Damascus in the end of uh, verse 17 of Galatians 1. He returned back to Damascus. And then if you flip over to Acts 9, that's when it says that after he had increased in strength, it says he confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus is the Christ. Now, what does it mean to prove that Jesus is the Christ? How do you go about proving that Jesus is the Christ? See, it's one thing to preach that Jesus is the Christ as he did immediately. It's another thing after he was strengthened to prove that Jesus is the Christ. You know, <clears throat> what I want you to notice here is that the Apostle Paul went through the same exact process that the other 11 went through. They were trained for how long? Three and a half years. How long was Paul? How long was it from his conversion until his until he went up to Jerusalem? Three years. Almost the same length of time. And most of that time he was in Arabia. Being taught personally by Jesus Christ himself. That's what he's saying here. <clears throat> so Paul spent years being taught by Christ himself in Arabia. Now, that doesn't mean Jesus left heaven and came down to earth, but Paul had an experience of vi visions where he saw Christ and he was taught by Christ um, while he was in Arabia. And then uh, it says here that um, he was proving that Jesus is Christ. Now, you know, in uh, if you look at the gospel accounts, when the other 11, you know, were with Jesus for three and a half years and... There was one occasion where, uh, actually there was more than one, but there was one particular occasion where Jesus turned to his disciples and he says, who do men say that I am? And 
you know, they said, well, some say you're Elijah, come back to life. Some say you're one of the prophets, something like that. And Jesus says, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter said something very important. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of God. The very same things that Paul was preaching in the synagogue there um, in Damascus. He says, but you are the Christ, the Son of God. Now, if G Jesus said, uh, Peter, blessed are you, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The Father revealed that to Peter. So Peter had the knowledge of who Jesus was. And he really knew, he really understood that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, even though later he denied him. So, it, you know, maybe it didn't sink in too good. But, but at least Peter had that knowledge that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, the, the Messiah of Psalm chapter 2, the one who was going to come and overthrow the nations and rule from Jerusalem with the rod of iron. But do you think Peter or the other apostles could prove that Jesus was the Christ. See, when Jesus sent them out on their mission to all the nations, and you look at Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2, what did he do? He proved that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, didn't he? In his sermon. And we see this happening in other uh, places as well in the New Testament. After Pentecost, they proved that Jesus was the Christ. But what's the difference between Peter saying earlier, before Christ's crucifixion, saying, you are the Christ, the Son of God, and then later Peter being able to prove it in such um, amazing ways in his preaching that Jesus was the Christ. What is the difference between those two things? Now, you might say, well, uh, you know, the holy, the holy breath of God came upon Peter at Pentecost and so forth. But Paul had the holy breath of God as well upon him. But something else happened with his teaching and his training personally by Jesus that had also happened to the other apostles. I want you to keep your finger here and go back to Luke chapter 24. <coughs> Excuse me. You may remember in Luke 24, we have the account of the two on the road to Emmaus, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, the day of Jesus' resurrection, and Jesus appeared to them walking along the road. Isn't that right? And um, it says, verse, um, verse 31, Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us? Now notice this. While he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us, he expounded. See, Jesus, while they were walking along, Jesus was expounding the Old Testament scriptures, those that talked about himself. He was expounding it to them. And they said, and now after he's gone, they're, they're like, didn't our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that hour and returned to Jerusalem. Well, they get back to Jerusalem and they find the other 11 and they talk about how Christ is risen and we've seen him and so forth. And then Jesus comes and shows up at the door. And uh, he comes in and uh, he says to them, verse 38, um, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Now, this is the first time that the eleven have seen him alive, except for Peter. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. That is, he was not an angel, is what he's saying. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things, notice this, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Verse 45, Then he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance 
and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Now, what Luke has done here is he has abbreviated this conversation. All right, he's instead of instead of giving us quoting, you know, how Jesus was expounding all these scriptures. When it says in verse forty-five. He opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. It doesn't mean, you know, Jesus went abracadabra, understand the scriptures. No. What that is talking about is that Jesus took those scriptures, he opened those scriptures, he read those scriptures to them, or he recited them, and he explained them, or he expounded those scriptures, and showed how that those scriptures were written about him. He gave them a commentary on those scriptures. And that's what it means that he opened their understanding. He opened their understanding by explaining, just as he had done to the two on the road to Emmaus. Because it says, um, after he had spoken to them, they said, Did not our hearts, hearts burn within us while he talked with us on, on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Again, he didn't just, you know, magically give them understanding. He was explaining the scriptures to them verse by verse. He went through Isaiah 53. He went through Psalm 22. He went through Micah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. He went through, <coughs> excuse me, he went through many of the Old Testament scriptures from the law, that is of Moses, Genesis through Deuteronomy, and through the prophets, and in the Psalms. And he went over Psalm chapter 2. He went over Psalm 16. He went over Psalm 110. He went over many of the Psalms that were about Jesus Christ. Certainly Psalm 22, which was about his crucifixion. And he expounded those to those 11. Now, what we have here is Jesus doing the same thing with the Apostle Paul. When it says he increased the more in strength, or when Paul says in Galatians 1 that he did not confer with the other apostles, he did not go up to Jerusalem immediately, instead he went into Arabia, and that's where he was taught personally. He received the message that he preached. He received it directly from Jesus Christ himself while he was in Arabia. That's what the Apostle Paul is teaching here. All right. Now, this is why it says in um, Acts chapter 9, Immediately, verse 20, immediately after his conversion, he preached that Christ is the Son of God. But after he returned from Arabia, after he increased all the more, in verse 22, then it says he confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. How did Paul prove that Jesus was the Christ? The same way that Jesus proved that he was the Christ from the Old Testament scriptures when he expounded them to the eleven. He also expounded them to Paul. So when Paul returned from Arabia, not only could he proclaim that Jesus was the Christ, but he could confound the Jews by proving it to them from the Old Testament scriptures. Because Christ fulfilled the prophecies. He fulfilled the prophecy of Micah as to where he would be born in Bethlehem. He fulfilled so many of these prophecies, even down to the parting of his garments while he was on the cross in uh, Psalm chapter 22. And... Uh, <clears throat> and many, many others. Um, Paul was able to draw these things out of these Old Testament passages and prove that Jesus was the Christ. All right, well, let's look at verse 23 now. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. <clears throat> it says, now after many days were passed, and that is a reference to the three years that we saw in Galatians chapter 1. After many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him, that is the, the followers, the Christians that were in, um, in Damascus. They took him by night and led him down through the wall in a large basket. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. But did, and did not believe that he was a disciple. <laughs> this is this is uh, it's pretty remarkable. You know, here he is. He's a he's a convert. He spent three years up in Damascus. the The church in Damascus has fully accepted him, and he has um, 
you know, he's he's gone out preaching to the Jews and proving it to the point where now they're trying to kill him. He comes down to Jerusalem, and uh, and they uh, they don't even want the, the Christian church there. They're afraid of him because you know because of his history. Verse twenty seven. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he that is Paul or Saul declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and how he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. Now this is while uh, he's with Jerusalem, or excuse me, with uh, the Christians in, in Jerusalem. Um, and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists. But they attempted to kill him. Now the Hellenists, who are the Hellenists? The Hellenists were... Jews who had who had adopted the Greek culture. They still followed uh, the law of Moses to an extent, but they were not the Puritans, if you will, of the uh, of the Jews. They were more of the liberal branch, I guess you might say, of the Jews <clears throat> who had adopted the Hellenistic ways. Uh, verse thirty. Then the brethren found out, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarsus. That is, they put him on a boat, sent him to Tarsus. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and comfort of the holy breath. They were multiplied. So because the persecution, you know, Saul or Paul was the guy who was the main instigator of the persecution. It says he was... He was, uh, Paul himself said that he was um, exceedingly enraged against them. He is the one who went to the chief priest to get letters so that he could go up to Damascus and arrest them. It's not, see, they didn't instigate it. He did. Saul instigated a lot of that persecution. And so because now he's a, he's a Christian and he is um, preaching Christ, the churches have... Um, Peace now for a time. All right, now let's go over to um, Galatians chapter 1 and <clears throat> see what Paul says about his stay in Jerusalem. Uh, go back to Galatians chapter 1 in verse, um, verse 16, verse 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, after that three-year time, I went up to Jerusalem. And here he says to see Peter. Now, <clears throat> he was sent, he was uh, sent, you know, through a, a hole in the wall and let down by a basket from Damascus and then he fled and he went to Jerusalem. Here he says that he was, when he went to Jerusalem, he intended to find Peter. He intended to uh, to seek Peter. Now, according to Acts, we know that the, the brethren there did not want to uh, have anything to do with him. But look what it says here. It says, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and I remained with him 15 days. He stayed with Peter 15 days. Well, we saw in Acts that it was because... Verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 27. Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And I want you to notice that it says that he brought him to the apostles, plural. Did Paul, Saul, only see Peter? No. Barnabas, at this time, brought him to the apostles, plural. He saw the apostles, all right? Now, this is going to be important uh, in, in a little while. All right, and then what, and what, did, what did Paul do when he was with the apostles? It says, and he, that is Paul, declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and how he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So Paul is recounting his conversion to the apostles, not just Peter, to the apostles, plural, and he is also telling them about the message that he was had been preaching at um, Damascus when he was proving that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. All right? 
That's important. Now, um, it says in, in um, verse 28 of Acts 9 that he was with them at Jerusalem coming in and going out. It doesn't say how long. But if you go back to Galatians, he tells us how long. Verse 18, Galatians 1. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him, that is, he stayed with Peter, 15 days. That's just a little over two weeks he was in Jerusalem. Now, was that long enough? Was that two weeks long enough for the Apostle Paul to get a complete education about Christianity from Peter? Of course not. You can't learn in two weeks what it took the other 11 to learn in three years. Isn't that right? You can't do it. Well, this is because the education was not from Peter. And that's the point that he's making in uh, Galatians chapter 1. And then he says in the next verse, But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now, it's important to understand that where it's, it says, I saw none of the other apostles, that that can be translated two different ways. And it's incorrect in your New King James Version. It's, it says, I saw none of the other apostles except James. What that implies then is that James was one of the apostles. And that's, James, the Lord's brother, was not one of the apostles. The other way of translating it is, I saw none other than, uh, excuse me, I saw no one other than the apostles, comma, except James, the Lord's brother. In other words, he's saying, I saw the apostles and I didn't see anybody else except the apostles other than James, the Lord's brother. All right, that he didn't spend time with a lot of Christians being taught uh, there. He saw the apostles, yes. And he saw James, the Lord's brother. Now, James, who is James? James is not the apostle James. Uh, the apostle James was um, killed by Herod. This James was Jesus' brother, who the apostles sort of put in charge, sort of like a pastor, of the church in Jerusalem. And he was there until his death, um, uh, which was close to the time that uh, Peter and Paul were imprisoned in Rome. But what happened to this James was that he was um, attacked at the temple by some of the Jews, and he was thrown off a wall at the temple thrown down where he he didn't die he was severely injured but he didn't die because of that so they came down and beat him to death with clubs and uh, that's how they ended up killing that particular James later which that was of course uh, decades later <clears throat> but anyway he's what he's saying here is that he didn't see any of the others except the apostles and James the Lord's brothers the Lord's brother now, concerning the things which I write to you, indeed, before God, I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they were hearing only, he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. Now, <clears throat> what's, what's he saying here? Well, he's talking about how that, in, according to Acts chapter nine and verse um he was at jerusalem and then um in verse um 29 he spoke boldly in the name of the lord jesus and disputed against the hellenists they attempted to kill him and then when the brethren found out they brought him down to caesarea and sent him to tarsus that is his hometown he got they got him out of town they got him out of jerusalem because uh they were going to uh kill him um because of his um conversion to christianity all right <clears throat> so that's what he's talking about there he says here, um, back in Galatians 1, um, I want you to notice verse 20. He says, Now concerning the things which I write to you indeed before God, I do not lie. Why is, Paul, why is Paul saying that? Why is he saying, look, I swear to you, before God, I'm not lying about this. About what? What is he not lying about? Well, this is what he's not lying about. Number one, that he was an apostle of Jesus Christ and not of men. Number two, that the things that he was teaching, verse 11, but I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which I preached 
is not according to men, for neither received for I neither received it from man nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the whole point that he's all of chapter one and the first part of chapter two is all to prove that statement that he's not an apostle by men, that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ, and that the message that he preached he did not get from the other apostles. He got it from Jesus himself. All right, that's the point that he's stressing throughout that. And this is why he goes on to talk about when he went up to Jerusalem and how long he stayed when he was there and who he saw while he was there. He only stayed there 15 days. He stayed with Peter and he only saw the apostles and James. Nobody else. And why? Because nobody else wanted to have anything to do with him because they were all afraid of him. Right? Um, as we saw there. So what he's, what he's doing is he's minimizing the fact that he even encountered the other apostles at all. He was only there 15 days, and when he left, he was sent out of town because the Jews were trying to kill him, and he was sent back to Tarsus, which was his hometown, which is all the way up in Turkey. I don't know if you know where Tarsus was, but it's on the coast of southern Turkey, <clears throat> And it's a long ways away from the other apostles or the early church. He was off by himself in Tarsus for, for, for a while, which means he was not able to interact with other authoritative Christians, that is the apostles or those who had seen Christ. He was not able to interact with them. The only interaction he had with those who had known Jesus himself was for 15 days. That's what he's saying. Which means he couldn't have gotten all that he had learned from other men, from other Christians or from the other apostles. He couldn't have gotten it from them. He only got it from Jesus Christ. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's go to um, uh, Acts chapter... 22. And I want to show you something else that's only recorded when Paul was giving his defense before the Jews many years later after he was arrested for preaching the gospel <clears throat> at the temple. He adds something that's not recorded earlier in Acts, but it fits right into this situation. During these 15 days, while the Apostle Paul was in Jerusalem after he had left Damascus, while he was staying with Peter for 15 days, he informs us later something that happened to him during that period of time. And I want you to go there. Acts chapter 22. And verse 17. <clears throat> if you remember, it, we were, when we were in Acts 22, we talked about how that, you know, Paul recounts his conversion in verses 3 through 11. And then in verses 12 through 16, he tells the story of how Ananias came to him at Damascus and how he received his sight um, and how that Ananias told him, you know, that he was chosen to, um, to see that just one and to hear his voice and so forth in verse 14. Then in verse 17, uh, in, in Paul's telling his story here, he jumps forward to when he went back to Jerusalem. All right, which was three years later, after he had been to Arabia and he came back and he was proving that Jesus is the Christ and then he was run out of Damascus and he went back to Jerusalem and he was with Peter for 15 days. Here's what Paul himself said about that. Verse 17, Now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple that I was in a trance and I saw him saying to me, that is, he saw Jesus in a vision, saying to him. Now, <clears throat> this is important because it gives us a little bit of a glimpse in the manner in which Jesus was teaching Paul while he was in Arabia the three years before this. You know, he doesn't say how he was taught by Christ. He just says that my message was not from man or through man, but it was by revelation of Jesus Christ, he says in Galatians chapter 1. And here, 
Paul says that when he went to Jerusalem after that, <clears throat> that he saw this vision. I was praying in the temple and I was in a trance. Or I, this is the same way, the same thing as saying he saw a vision. That is, you know, it's like it's like uh, it was the same thing that happened to the Apostle John when he was in on the island of Patmos. That he was, it says, I was in the spirit or the holy breath. The holy breath of God enveloped him, John, and he saw Christ appearing to him. Now, was Jesus, did Jesus leave heaven and come down to the island of Patmos to appear to John? No. See, when the holy breath of God encompasses someone so that they are in the breath, the distance between them and heaven is is gone they're able to see christ and christ is able to appear to them even while he's still in heaven it's like skyping <laughs> i said this before it's like skyping him and being able to see what's going on in heaven and him being able to talk to to uh, john while he was on earth well the same things happened to paul he talks about this also in um, that kind of thing happening to him in second corinthians um which we'll talk about another time but look Look what happened. He says, um, and I saw him saying to me. It doesn't say I heard him saying to me. I saw him. So Paul was, when he was in Jerusalem for those 15 days, he was at the temple praying, and all of a sudden he was like in this state where he could see Christ, and Christ could communicate directly with him, even though Paul was not in heaven nor was Jesus on earth, but he could see there. We see this also happening with Stephen um, when he was stoned to death in Acts chapter, what is it, 7, I believe. When Stephen was stoned to death, he said, I see heaven opened and I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And then, you know, they, they you know, said blasphemy and they, they, uh, they killed him there, right? But he could see into heaven itself as to what was going on. And that's what happened with the Apostle Paul. All right, so let's continue. He says, um, he was saying to me, these are the words of Jesus. Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. And of course, that was, he was only there uh, 15 days. Verse 19. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who, who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by, consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. Now notice that's still future tense. I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. Now, he had commissioned him three years earlier, saying... I will send you to the Gentiles. Isn't that right? And now he's saying it again. I will, future tense, send you to the Gentiles. See, up to this point, the Apostle Paul has been preaching in the synagogues to the Jews, but he hasn't been preaching to the Gentiles. And he won't preach to the Gentiles until there's an official sending of the Apostle Paul, as we'll see uh, later in Acts, from the church of Antioch, on Paul's first missionary journey <clears throat> to the Gentiles. Uh, we'll get that um, a little later. <clears throat> All right, let's go, um, let's go back to, let me see here. Um, All right, back in, uh, in Acts chapter 9, we saw that uh, the Apostle Paul was sent off after this. During these 15 days, he saw this vision of Jesus. He was then sent by the church in Jerusalem to his hometown in um, Tarsus, which is up in Turkey, a long ways away. And that was to, that was to spare him from, you know, any kind of uh, mobs or of Jews trying to uh, kill him. He was just sent off to his hometown. Just stay there for a while, Paul, until, you know, Jesus is ready, I guess, ready for you to send you to the Gentiles like he said he was going to do. Right? So, um... Uh, let's see. All right, now let's go back to um, Galatians chapter 
Um, uh, just a minute here. No, actually, I want to go to um, Acts chapter 11 now. All right, let's go to Acts 11. I want to keep this in chronological order. I don't want to skip around. All right. Acts chapter 11, and I want to read verse uh, 25. <clears throat> you remember, who was it that brought Paul to the apostles in Jerusalem? It was Barnabas, isn't that right? They were when he came to Jerusalem. Nobody wanted, none of the Christians wanted to associate with him. But it says that Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and then he stayed with Peter for fifteen days. So uh, we see Barnabas coming into the situation again here in um, um, chapter. Where was I? Chapter eleven, verse nineteen. All right. <clears throat> now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose with Stephen, Stephen traveled um, as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them, who were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. Now Antioch is sort of the capital of that area in Syria. Um, it's not that far from Damascus. All right, so he's back up in, or this is back up in Syria. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and returned and turned to the Lord. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. Now this is after Paul has been sent away to Tarsus, okay? And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. So now Barnabas, who was with Paul in Jerusalem, now is sent by the apostles up to Antioch in Syria. And when he came, he had seen the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. So we have this church now being established among these Jews in Antioch. For he was a good man, that is Barnabas, full of the holy breath and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Well, now after... After this, Barnabas, who no doubt had been, who had listened to the Apostle Paul as he told his story of his conversion and how Christ had said he was going to send him to the Gentiles, to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. This church in Antioch, now that uh, Barnabas had been sent up to, it was only, they were only preaching to the Jews, it said in verse 19, right? It says, preaching the word to none other but to Jews only. And that was Jews, including Hellenists. That is, Hellenists, again, were the Jews who were living according to Greek customs, but they were still Jews. <clears throat> All right, And so this church in Antioch was founded with Jews only. So Barnabas gets up there, and he's uh, you know, teaching and preaching also in this church, and many people are being added to the Lord. But what, what's missing? What's missing from the church in Antioch? Gentiles. There are no Gentiles. They only have been preaching to the Jews. And how do you preach to pagans? You know, how do you do that? Well, so what does Barnabas get? He gets an idea. Hey, what about Saul or Paul? <laughs> right? Look at verse 25. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year... They assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And in those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. And that was, they were, this was during the days of Claudius Caesar that this was given. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling at Judea. This they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now, look what's happening here. Barnabas, or a church, is established in Antioch. Saul, or Paul, has been sent off to Tarsus, to his hometown in Turkey, where 
He's just kind of laying low for a little while. Barnabas is sent up to Antioch once the news arrives that this church is being established there in, uh, in Antioch amongst the Jews. Barnabas goes up there. He's helping out with the church, and he's, he gets in his head, you know what, we need the Apostle Paul. We need him here. So he goes and he finds Paul in Antioch, and he bring, or, I'm sorry, in Tarsus, and he brings him back to Antioch in Syria. And for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul, or Paul, are teaching at this church in Antioch. And then, during that time, one of the prophets from among the Christians announces by, the, by, by God's holy breath that there's going to be a famine. And so the church in Antioch now, they decided that they were going to assist the, the, those hit by the famine in Jerusalem. And so, verse 29, the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea, that is uh, the area around Jerusalem, this they did and sent it to the elders. Now, this is very important. By the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now, this will be Saul or Paul's second trip to Jerusalem. All right. His second trip to Jerusalem. This second trip to Jerusalem, the Apostle Paul tells us how long it was from Pentecost until he arrived. This is where uh, chronology comes in. And I can see that I'm about out of time. So we're going to deal with that next week. But something important happens while the Apostle Paul was in Jerusalem the second time. And we know exactly when this was. It was the year A.D. 44, which was exactly 14 years after Christ's crucifixion and the day of Pentecost until the Apostle Paul was at Jerusalem. And we'll prove that to you um, next time. All right. So God bless you all. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.